Okay, before we do anything, um, I actually just wanted to go through the little packet that I gave you. So this is page zero. We're going to start here today. This really is a review from last year, which is why I felt like it was important for you guys to kind of go at your own pace because I know we were all in different classes last year, um, but all of your teachers should have done this. So the first page, we're going to do that today. Um, then there's some practice worksheets. You're going to get to a, a paper that has a... Here it is. It has a Q on it. This is actually a quiz. So when you are ready to take this quiz, it could be after this lesson, it could be after you do the other two worksheets because you need practice. You're going to rip this page out of your packet and hand it in to me and I will grade it. Uh, I'm not going to grade it immediately, so do not ask me what you got on the quiz. Um, but I will grade all of them and let you know. I will give this paper back to you. Uh, we're going to go through some reciprocal trig functions. You should remember these from last year. Um, then we're going to talk about things with the unit circle. And then at the very end of the packet, there is not a paper quiz, but at the end of the packet after this last page, there is going to be an online quiz. Okay, and then we'll move on together as a class to go to the next section. But I just thought it was important since we're all in different places here, kind of just to work at your own pace. So I'm going to start here and we're going to start talking about radians. And you might remember last year, um, you could convert degrees to radians and radians to degrees. And I think it's important that we just talk about what a radian is. So I'm going to try to explain this as um, best as possible. And here we go. Well, I guess I should. It's, I mean, it's my job. So here is a circle. All of this is based off a circle where the radius is one. That is called the unit circle because it only has one unit. The radius is one. So here is the radius of one. Remember, a circle has an infinite number of radii. So if I had another radii, it would also be one. I could also take the number one, and I could pretend I had a ruler or something and say this is one. And if I took this piece that I just drew and I bent it around the circle, so now you need to imagine that this is bending onto the circle, it would still remain one, it would just be bent. So now this... This is what we call one radian. A radian is not a degree. A radian is the length of something in degrees. So it's the, the length of the arc represented by a section of the circle. And the section of the circle would be if I drew another radius of one and I connected them to make this little thing here. Remember, it's called a central angle. Now, if we're talking about a circle, we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Well, in this case, the radius was 1, and since we took 1 and bent it around here, we could say that this circumference, this circle has a circumference of 2 pi r, or 2 pi radians. And all of this is going to lead me to the measure of this central angle. Now, a full circle going around has 360 degrees. So you're trying to figure out how many degrees is represented by just this little portion right here. It looks like it's definitely less than a quarter, so it's definitely less than 90. But it's not 45, and you can't assume that it's 95. But I can solve this for radian. How much is one radian? Well, I don't know, but I can divide, I do know, you can divide 360 by 2 pi and 360 by 2 pi. And if you do that in your calculator, you will see that 360 divided by 2 pi is 57.2958. And this number is the measure of the degrees that are made by this central angle. So if you have a central angle of 57.2958, you can find exactly one radian that you can take off the circle, straighten it out, and it would be the same size as the radius. So that's essentially what a radian is. If you wanted to convert, remember you can convert radians to degrees and degrees to radians. So let's take this first one and convert 120 degrees to radians. In order to do this, I need the pi symbol. That's like an easy way to remember this. Um, so pi over 180. The easiest way to do this is to take 120 divided by 180 in your calculator. Get the decimal, 
do not put the decimal, put it back into a fraction. So it's 2 thirds pi. So what this is really saying is that if you had a central angle of 120 degrees, so I'm just going to use this one up here. And I know this is like a lot of explaining, but I really, guys, I really want you guys to understand what all of this is, especially if you're going to calculus next year. Um, it doesn't mean not to pay attention if you're going to statistics. But here's a circle. It's 180 degrees. We have a central angle of 120. So we're just going to guesstimate it's about here. Okay, so here, right here, here, right here, this is 120. What this 2 pi over 3 is saying, well, what's 2 pi over 3? 2 pi divided by 3 is 2.094. So let's just say it's 2.1. And what this tells you is, remember this radian from over here. What this tells you is how many of those you would need to make 120 degrees. Well, that makes sense. Look, 1, 2, and a little bit more. Well, here's two and a little bit more. So that's really what this is telling you. Um, we're not really gonna talk about this as in depth like this really for the rest of the lesson, um, but that's essentially where it's coming from. Um, the rest of this is really just gonna be about converting degrees to radians, but now you know what all of this is behind the scenes. Remember, you can have positive degrees, you can have negative degrees. When we're doing this in the coordinate plane, even though it seems like it's going backwards and it should be um, opposite, this is a positive direction. This is the negative direction. So if you had a negative 245, we're going to take this, do the same thing. So multiply it by pi over 180. 245 over 180, turn that back into a fraction, and remember you have to keep it negative. So this would be 4 thirds, or 4 pi over 3, and make sure you say that it's negative. Now if you're converting from degrees to radians, it's pi over 180. If you're going from radians to degrees, it's 180 over pi and the reason is because you want this back into degrees and in degrees there are no radians so these simplify and become one hold on let me this is what you're doing pi over three times 180 over pi these cross simplify to become one 180 divided by three equals 60 degrees same thing negative three pi over four times 180 over pi Pi's cross simplify, negative 3, 180's over 4 is negative 135. Okay, we're just going to talk real quick about the quadrants of the unit circle. So you should know them in degrees, so this would be 0. It's a quadrant, so it splits it up into 4. 360 divided by 4 goes by 90, so 0. 90, 180, 270, 360, or back to zero. You can also talk about this in radians. How many radians would it be to go from here to here? It would be pi over two radians. It would be half of a radian. If you convert this into degrees, pi over two times uh, 180 over pi, you'll see that you get 90. So this should be a fraction. Pi over 2, 180 is pi radians, and 270 is 3 pi over 2 radians. So important numbers to remember. Uh, if you ever get confused with this, when in doubt, just convert it back to degrees because that's how most of us think is in degrees. We don't think in radians. Okay. Uh, in which quadrant or on which axis is the terminal side of the angle lie? So to me, the easiest way to do these is to convert them into degrees. So I'm going to multiply this by 180 over pi. I'm going to cross simplify my pi's. 4 times 180 over 3 is 240. Okay, and you might remember from last year, this is when you started to do all those little swirly things. So 240, well this is 90, 180, you don't want to hit 270 you can just estimate that it's about here. What quadrant is it in? Well, here's one, two, three, so it's in the third quadrant. Do the same thing for letter B. 
negative 5 pi over 4 times 180 over pi. Cross simplify your pi's. Negative 5 times 180 divided by 4 is negative 225. Again, be careful now about how you're going, what direction you're going in, because it is negative, which means you have to go 1. So here's 90, 180. This would be 270 degrees, and you don't want to hit that. So here's 1 and then 2. Last one is 9 pi over 2. Convert it to degrees. Cross simplify. Uh, what is that? 8, 10? Yes, 810 degrees. So now at this point, you should recognize well, g whiz, that's over 360. Well, it's over 360. So you go at least one time. You're left with five, uh, 450. That's another time around the circle. So you go around two full times and then you go an extra 90 degrees. When you get to this 90 degrees, you don't need to be in a quadrant. It says, or on which axis. So this is on the y axis. Okay, uh, these two I'm just going to skip for right now because there aren't any like that on this worksheet. And I really want you guys to practice converting into degrees, radians, and drawing your little swirly angles. So work on this. Um, I'm sure somebody around you will also be done around the same time. You can check your answers on here or you can check them on um, the Google Classroom. And when you're done with these two worksheets, make sure you check your answers because you want to know that you're doing it correctly. We cannot move on with, until the next thing until you understand what's happening here. Um, and then I would do this quiz. Realistically, this quiz should be done by um, by Tuesday.